If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. We have redrawn the picture in order to evaluate it more thoroughly. And what we're going to do is call the corner of the tabletop the origin. And so up here, we could say that the height would be zero. We can mark that as y is equal to zero. And then we'll notice that one fourth of the entire length of this rope is hanging over the edge of the table. So that means that from here all the way down to here, we have a, a distance or a length of one fourth L. Well, if this point up here is located at y equals zero, and then we move below the origin, that means that at this point right here, we would have a y value equal to negative one fourth L. And it's negative, of course, because we're moving down the negative y-axis. What we will do next is divide the chain into a number of segments that are infinitesimally small. And so we can mark one of those segments perhaps about right here. So this tiny little section of the chain is what we're looking at right now. And because it's so tiny, the actual length of that segment would be represented not by y, but rather by dy. We always use the notation dy to represent infinitesimal quantities. In this case, this very tiny quantity is a length, so we're going to represent that infinitesimal length as dy. And what we want to do is come up with the mass of that segment. And in order to understand that, we're going to say that the mass of that segment, which I suppose we could even call dm, would equal the length of that segment multiplied by what we can call a mass density, or a mass per unit length. Now if you study that equation carefully, you would see that the lengths would actually cancel out, and so we would have mass equaling mass. So hopefully the equation makes some sense. Now the length of this very tiny segment we have already stated is dy. And as far as the quantity mass divided by length is concerned, what we can do is take the entire mass of this wire and divide it by its length. Now, the mass of the wire was given to us in kilograms, and the total length also was given to us in centimeters. But for now, we'll just use variables. We'll just use m divided by l. Now, we know that the gravitational potential energy of an object would equal its mass multiplied by g multiplied by a height above some reference point. Now, in the case of our infinitesimal segment of this chain, we could say that its potential energy would be du, since it's a very tiny amount of potential energy. And that would equal, rather than mass, we would use the dm, because that, again, is a very tiny amount of mass, times g, times the distance that our little segment is from our reference point. Now, we'll notice that that distance is actually below the reference point. And so this distance right here would be represented by negative y. That means rather than y in the equation, we're going to have to call that distance negative y. Now we can adjust this equation because we have deduced earlier that dm is equal to this expression right here. And so we'll go ahead and fill that in. We could then actually take this negative sign and just move it out into the front of the expression on the right-hand side. Now, of course, we don't want just the potential energy change for this little segment of the chain. We want the entire potential energy ch change of that full length, one fourth L. And so to come up with the total potential energy change, we're going to have to integrate both sides of this equation. The left-hand side just becomes the total potential energy change. And then on the right-hand side, what we need are the limits of integration. Now we're integrating the entire length of this wire starting down here at negative one-fourth L and then moving all the way up to zero. So our lower limit of integration will be that negative one-fourth L. And then the upper limit will be zero. We can kind of rearrange this equation just a little bit. The dy conventionally will be placed at the end of the integral. And then we'll notice that the quantity m over l times g is a constant because we already know the mass of the entire chain and its length, and of course g is a constant. So in fact, we can actually take that constant and remove it to the outside of the integral. We can also remove this negative sign to the outside of the integral. That's going to leave y left inside. 
We are now prepared to evaluate the integral. On the outside, we still have the negative mg over L. Now, of course, the integral of y is easily calculated. All we have to do is take this exponent and add 1 to it to make it become y squared. And then we divide by that new exponent, which, of course, will be that too. And we're evaluating this from negative 1 fourth L all the way to 0. Now, when evaluating, we have to plug in the upper limit first. We're plugging it in for y. But of course, if we plug 0 into y, we're going to end up with 0, because we'll have 0 squared divided by 2. And so the first value in this integral will actually just be 0. And then we subtract what we get by plugging in the lower limit of integration, which is that negative 1 fourth L. So we're going to plug that in for y right here. And don't forget that we have to square that y, and we're still dividing by 2. Now if we examine this carefully, we can see that this minus sign and this minus sign will actually get together and make a plus sign. So that simplifies the expression a little bit to just mg over l. And then when we square the negative 1 fourth, it will become positive, And then we're going to have l squared over 16. Notice we squared the l and the 4. But then it's still all divided by 2. So it gets a little bit messy here. Algebraically, what we can do is move this 16 down to the denominator and then multiply by that 2. So we're going to end up with 32. And then we can cancel a factor of L in the numerator and denominator. That's going to leave us with MGL all divided by 32. So this represents the total change in potential energy as we drag that segment of chain from its lower position all the way up to the tabletop. Now, of course, the work done is equal to that change in potential energy. So we can actually set the work equal to MGL all divided by 32. And then at this point, we can plug in the known values for mass and length. Mass is given to us in a standard unit of kilograms. Of course, we know G is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then the length is in centimeters, so you're going to want to take that 28 centimeters, multiply it by 10 to the minus 2 to get it into meters, and then divide this all by 32. And when you work this out, you should get roughly 0 0.0010, and the standard unit of work or change in potential energy is joules. So this will be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address represented on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the solution to it on YouTube.